Hey guys, it's Emma Vigling with TYT Politics. So yesterday was a horrible day for privacy in America. 191 Republicans and 65 Democrats voted yes on a bill to extend warrantless NSA surveillance for six more years, allowing the bill to pass the House easily. The vote, 256 to 164, centered on an expiring law that permits the government without a warrant to collect communications from United States companies like Google and AT&T of foreigners abroad, even when those targets are talking to Americans. Congress had enacted the law in 2008 to legalize a form of a once-secret warrantless surveillance program created after the terrorist attacks on September 11, 2001. So by the way, when you receive assurances that it is only the government's only spying on the bad guys abroad, know that this is a bold-faced lie. The program can collect your communications indiscriminately without a warrant as long as the targets are not Americans. That is sufficiently vague enough for the NSA to abuse their powers, and we know that they will, based on history. The hero, Edward Snowden, revealed the extent of that abuse in 2013. The NSA widely collects domestic communications as well, and attempts to safeguard against the very abuses that Snowden exposed failed yesterday too. The post-Snowden privacy movement secured its largest victory in 2015 when Congress voted to end and replace one of the programs that Mr. Snowden exposed under which the NSA had been secretly collecting logs of American domestic phone calls in bulk. But lawmakers who hope to add significant privacy constraints to the warrantless surveillance program, too, fell short on Thursday. Before voting to extend the law known as Section 702 of the FISA Amendments Act, the House rejected an amendment that would have imposed a series of new safeguards. That proposal included the requirement that officials obtain warrants in most cases before hunting for and reading emails and other messages of Americans that were swept up under the surveillance. They rejected that amendment. <laughs> so we are almost in the exact same place that we were when Snowden revealed this information years ago because God knows that the cozy relationship between the United States government, the surveillance community, and the telecommunications companies, that it has to remain intact at all costs. Microsoft, Google, Facebook, Apple, AT&T, and Yahoo are just a few of the companies who worked with the government to violate your rights on a regular basis. And by the way, that's a merging of state and corporate power. That is fascism. This is a fascist thing to do. And Section 702 doesn't even go far enough in itself, The Intercept explains. Section 702 doesn't limit how data can be used by federal law enforcement. That has given a rise to the backdoor search loophole in which the NSA shares certain kinds of information with the FBI, which the FBI then uses to search for Americans' communications without a warrant. A bipartisan group of libertarian-leaning Republicans and progressive Democrats in the House tried to fight back against fascism, and they failed. The 256 House members who are okay with giving a pass to fascism, all in the name of relationships with uh, telecommunication companies, I guess, and fighting terrorism, won. Oh, and we have a madman in office, too. But these Democrats were okay with handing him the keys, I guess. Um, here are uh, the notable Democrats in my book who voted yes on NSA spying. Let's call them out. Jim Clyburn, the House Assistant Minority Leader, who was the Majority Whip for four years before that. He is a representative from South Carolina. Then Representative Jim Cooper, a proud Blue Dog Democrat of Tennessee. Representative Charlie Chris, the former Governor of Florida and now representing Florida's 13th District. Christ was a Republican who then joined the Democratic Party in 2012, and Obama endorsed him. Wow. And then Rick Scott defeated him. It's almost as if conservative Democrats who spend uh, their campaigns talking about how much like Republicans they are, except they're, they don't hate minorities, they lose to actual Republicans. Huh. Representative John Garamendi, who represents an area around San Francisco, I wonder if that has anything to do with this decision. Representative Josh Gottheimer of my home state, I almost went to work for him, his campaign, before TYT, interestingly enough, and thank God I went to work here. Uh, a former Obama speechwriter who 
loves raising money, sure. Representative Steny Hoyer, who serves as the House Minority Whip and is the most senior Democrat in the House after John Conyers was forced to resign due to sexual misconduct. Uh, yeah, he's on board. Representative Adam Schiff, who is trying to ride his constant Russia talk to the White House allegedly in 2020. He represents the 28th District of California. No surprise here, Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz. I think everybody knows this name, right? Uh, no explanation needed, pretty much. And last but certainly not least, the leader of the Democratic Party in the House, Nancy Pelosi. Yes, the leader of the Democratic Party is a proponent of extending NSA spying without any amendments or changes. Nancy Pelosi, what the fuck are you good for as the Democratic Party leader when you just can't stand up for Americans' basic Fourth Amendment rights? It's the fourth one. It's pretty important. And I get it. You're in California, so those tech companies are really all over you and you need to please them. But do you remember that you actually have a constituency and you're not just in it for the cash? What she would probably say is that, yes, NSA spying is an effort to protect her constituency, to protect the American people from terror, right? Well, in 2013, a White House panel member on NSA surveillance admitted that the NSA program, the PRISM program, had stopped no terrorist attacks. We found none, the member said. This isn't about terrorism, and they know it. This is about maintaining government power and control at all costs and by any means necessary. Truly, even when they trample all over the Constitution, they don't care. This is one the Democratic Party disgusts me most. And, you know, I don't want to hear another thing from either party about the Constitution unless you were one of the voices, the libertarian or the progressive voices, speaking up against this violating and revolting program. It is really disgusting that this is the point that we've gotten after 9-11, where all of our rights can be trampled on, our Fourth Amendment rights, one that should be extremely important, the Founding Fathers put it in there for a reason, just because uh, we've kind of gone mad in terms of terrorism, and we're othering people and fear-mongering and going so far to protect this, this country from terrorism even when the programs are ineffective.